Anyone else left to testify? All right. I'm taking the time limits off for you. Appreciate that, Mr. Chairman. Yes, this will be the grand finale. I thank everybody for staying. I spent a good amount of time on this, so. Yep, take your time. I think few of the people most recently uh, that spoke touched on this a little bit. The reasons behind hey, the uh, there's some. Uh, if you want to give it a second, yeah. people clear. Well, this out isn't here. really part of my speech, but I guess I'll say okay. it to you guys. Go These ahead. guys already know. Whenever you're ready. Um, the most recent, uh, some of the most recent groups touched on the reasons behind the Second Amendment. I kind of wrote this to go a little bit more in depth as to why the Second Amendment exists. And here I'll start. Good afternoon. Haha. <laughs> <laughs> Good evening, representatives, and thank you again for your time today. Good morning, right? The United States of America, above all else, is a constitutional republic. Yes, we have a democracy in which we get to vote for our elected officials, but our elected officials, you, above all else, are limited in your power and in the legislation that you pass by the Constitution of the United States, a document on which you raised your right hand to God and swore an oath to a document whose premise is regularly under attack. Unfortunately, it's being attacked by the very people who are sworn to abide by it, our government. And it's our own faults that the Constitution is under duress. We, the American people, who are supposed to have control of our government, have been asleep at the wheel and all too trusting, while you, our legislators, senators, representatives, and politicians of all parties and backgrounds, have run amok, unabashedly using your power and influence to limit the freedoms and liberties of the individual. Americans love to proclaim that we are a free people, yet have lost sight of what it means to be free, and in saying so, are lying to ourselves. Yes, we are fortunate enough to have freedoms that others in the world do not, but we are no longer free as our founders had intended us to be. Yet those very founders had foreseen how even in America, a runaway government could become problematic, and they added a constitution to the, uh, an amendment to the Constitution, a failsafe, so to speak that would protect us against the rampant abuse of power by our government, an inalienable constitutional right to keep and bear arms. The founders saw this as so important and necessary, it was the Second Amendment to our Constitution, directly following the right to free speech, which I'm fortunate enough to benefit from here today. The founders of this great land knew, having just won war for their freedom against an unjust power, that given enough time, all governments have a propensity to become too powerful and as a direct result, the freedom of its constituents falters. This was their reasoning behind their inclusion of the right to keep and bear arms within the Constitution. They even went so far as to include, even though it's already implied, the phrase, shall not be infringed. This does not mean that you, regardless of how many people call on you to do so, can limit the type or capacity of the firearms that we, as free Americans, can own. Don't forget, it, don't forget that at the time of this country's founding, Americans had access legally to the same type of weaponry that the military had. And that was the point. It was for our protection against the state. That's how we can keep them in check. I think if we look at the tremendous amount of overreach practiced today by the United States government, it's pretty apparent why those at the very top want to take away this means of protection that our forefathers entrusted to us. They realize that we Americans who hold our liberties dare are fed up. We are tired of being overregulated. We're tired of being taxed until we're near penniless. We're tired of our money going to a Federal Reserve to pay an unsustainable debt that we have to international banksters who couldn't care less about America. We're tired of having to ask for government's permission and licensure to do things that are within our God-given rights as free people to do. We're tired of seeing state-run programs being ran inefficiently, ineffectively, and wastefully. We're tired of news outlets Hollywood, social media, and the education system being used as propaganda to indoctrinate the populace and advance the state's agenda. We're tired of being lied to. We're tired of going to war under false pretenses. To summarize, we're tired of our uncontrollable government. While we feel our voices have fallen on deaf ears to our politicians, make no mistake that amongst the citizenry, there is a quiet storm brewing. We are approaching a tipping point. And you'd be remiss to think that those at the top of the power structure aren't shaken by this. It doesn't take much critical thought to surmise why they're trying so hard to pass legislation against privately owned munitions. And to those who support this legislation, it's my understanding that you believe by being here you're advocating against violence. On the contrary, you're advocating for violence. If the state decides to make 10 round magazines and assault weapons, which by the way is an incredibly vague, ambiguous term that I don't think anybody could really define, 
if you decide to make them illegal. Are you advocating that the state use violence or threats of violence to disarm innocent Americans? Because it certainly sounds like it. You can't sincerely believe that we're just going to forfeit our right to self-defense knowing the purpose of this right and understanding the unlawfulness of civil asset forfeiture, notwithstanding the money people have spent on their guns. What happens when we defy these laws? Are you advocating that men with guns come to take away our guns? Because it sure sounds like it. Also, it needs to be said that I'm sure some of those on the other side have used the words Trump and Hitler in the same sentence, yet advocate that the state, with someone who they refer to as a fascist dictator at the forefront, be the only entity allowed to have guns. You see where I'm going with this? These people are hypocrites, and they should think for themselves instead of thinking what they're told to think. And before you quip that I'm here on behalf of the NRA or that I have some sort of ulterior motive, I am not and I do not. I am not an NRA member. In fact, I believe that the NRA is far too willing to compromise on some gun laws as they know they will take on more donors and make more money whenever there is conflict. So the more they compromise, the more gun laws get introduced and the more money they make. So no, before anybody says so, I'm not NRA, and I'm also what, not what you might call a gun nut. I own but a pistol for personal protection and a rifle which I've literally just acquired as a direct result of this law being written. I'm not a sportsman and I'm not a collector. I'm just someone with an understanding of history who by virtue does not trust his government. And I know what some of you may be thinking, that I'm some sort of extremist, my delivery is very abrasive. Some of you aren't thinking at all because you tuned me out at the start once you heard my position, and that's fine. If these generalizations apply to you, I ask you to please familiarize yourself with the history of America and the Constitution as, as it was written. Ladies and gentlemen, America was conceived out of defiance, and we not only have a constitutional right as free Americans, but also an inalienable right as human beings to defy any and all laws that are unjust. Lest we not forget that a mere 3% of colonists sparked the American Revolution. There are millions of libertarians paying attention to what is being discussed today. Representatives, it is a sure bet that if the government you represent continues on this path of tyranny, we will not comply. I ask you to please remember the basis on which this country came to be before you decide to pass any more overreaching legislation, especially in regards to firearms. For those who forget history are doomed to repeat it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Any questions?